Thank you for joining this webcast uh, related to structural professional engineer. So I will go ahead and get started. And like I said earlier, the webinar today is in regards to the 3D experience structural professional engineer. And this is a product that is based on the Simulia Works platform of simulation. So it brings the powerful capabilities of the Simulia Abacus solver and meshing components to an easy to use interface that is part of the 3D experience platform. Before we get into structural professional engineer, what I wanted to do is just kind of cover the SOLIDWORKS simulation packaging and what you may currently already have or already be using. And that starts with the SOLIDWORKS Premium, which is the basis for our simulation package. That's the static linear and parsing assemblies. There's simulation standard, professional, and premium. And these all add levels of complexity into the solution, different modes of failure that you can, you can start addressing. And at that SOLIDWORKS simulation premium levels where you start getting into your nonlinear static and dynamic analysis, some harmonic and random vibration type loading. And this is really where SPE kind of takes over from this level on. And it does have uh, some of the nice features that you see in Perlin standard as well. So what I did was I kind of put together a pyramid based on where SPE or um, structural professional engineer fits into the simulation uh, suite of tools. So, you know, at the designer level, that's where you have SOLIDWORKS premium. And that's again, giving you that linear static analysis and motion uh, capabilities. From there, SOLIDWORKS simulation standard gives you the additional fatigue uh, aspect. And again, that's under kind of the designer uh, level when you start getting to the engineering level, that's where you start adding a little bit more uh, complexity into the solution. So things like topology, optimization, resonant frequency analysis, and so forth. And that's where SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium comes in. And it's actually really good with the linear dynamic aspect. It does a, a good job with the nonlinear, but what you're going to see here next is where we really think the structural professional engineer fits in and that is at the nonlinear uh, static and dynamic realm. So you don't really have to be an analyst to be able to utilize it. But what I'm trying to uh, express here is, is bringing analyst capabilities to, uh, to your desktop. And then from there, there's always, if you needed to go into a multi-physics type simulation, um, that's where the Dassault system Simulia in the full Abigail solver suite comes into play. So if you had to do a crash test, or you know uh, something along those lines. That's where the Smolia comes into play. Um, but what again we're going to look at today is the structural professional engineer. Now, what I wanted to do is kind of show you where SolidWorks Simulation Premium let, leaves off, uh, some of the capabilities that we can do with that, and why you might want to look at the structural professional engineer. We're, so we're going to look at the Simulation Premium first see where we can get with that setup. Look at the 3D Experience Connector. That's a way of taking the setup from SOLIDWORKS simulation and bringing it into SPE. And then we're gonna get into the Structural Professional Engineer um, software. So starting off, I wanted to cover analyzing this rubber bumper in SOLIDWORKS simulation premium. So let me go ahead and open up uh, the file. and We'll talk through the setup of this model. So we have an assembly, it has a top plate and a bottom plate and a rubber bumper in between. I'm gonna go ahead and add in SOLIDWORKS simulation through the add-ins. And what you're going to see is it's gonna start the simulation tab on the command manager. And I have this study already set up. So we'll just kind of review uh, the model itself. So both plates are uh, alloy steel, that rubber bumper, uh, the material for it is actually a hyperelastic rubber material. Go ahead and look at the material properties of that. And what we see here 
is it is hyperelastic, it is Mooney Rivlin, and it's based on two uh, material constants. And like I said before, the upper and lower plates are steel. As far as the model itself, because we are compressing this, we need to define contact sets that tell the software how this is going to be touching. So those internal holes of the rubber bumper, as it gets squished down, those will come into contact with each other, and that's a no penetration contact. At the bottom of the plate, we're going to go ahead and make this fixed, and then we're going to utilize a prescribed displacement instead of a force at the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to compress this with 55 millimeters of displacement. So we're going to squish this down. And then for the top plate as well, we're going to add in a constraint that it cannot move along the X and the Y uh, direction. So let me go ahead and hide my fixtures here. Let's go ahead and look at the mesh. So the mesh inside of SolidWorks simulation is a tetrahedral mesh. I use the standard mesh just to get this to run a little bit quicker, but we can see that the SolidWorks mesh does a very good job of mapping that geometry. It meshes very quickly and it gets us kind of up and running uh, pretty quick. Now with this being a nonlinear static analysis, we do have to give it a load increment step. And in this case, it's 0 0.01. So it's a small load increment initially. And I'm using the direct sparse solver, which is going to increment that load and give us a uh, output at every time step or at every increment step. So let's take a look at SolidWorks Simulation Premium solving this analysis. So it starts off, it starts at that small uh, solution step and it starts moving its way through. Now I turned on the option where we can see those results as it solves. This is one of the niceties that Simulation Premium does offer and it kind of gives us a feel for what's happening in the analysis as the solver is working through. Now I did speed uh, up the solution or I sped up the solution since we only have a short amount of time uh, today. So the solution itself took a little over an hour and you can see the uh, time frame is, is moving pretty quickly. I mean, we got to this, this um, spot or time uh, increment at about 18 to 20 minutes getting to this portion of the solution. But what's happening is as those contact areas are coming together, the software has to take a lot smaller step in trying to resolve what's happening within those. And what you're going to see here is the current time step actually starts working its way backwards. And as it works its way backwards, what happens is we start to diverge in the solution. And we really get to about 70 some percent. And if you look here, I zoomed in, it's one hour and 17 minutes to get up to about 72% of the solution. And this really is about as far as simulation premium can take this. Now, you know, there are other things that we could do to help it progress further. Things like um, reducing the time step, right? Making that a lot smaller, maybe tightening the mesh in and around uh, those areas. And that's going to give us a better feel for the contact, but it's also gonna increase the amount of runtime. So what we see here is I actually canceled the study at about 70%, 68%. And what that does is it uh, allows me to still see the results up to that point, but we only got to about 70% of the overall travel of that 55 millimeters that we were trying to apply. So why didn't we get to 100% solution? Well, I kind of talked about that a little bit, but one reason is because of the implicit solver handles strain roughly up to 500%. So with regards to the direct spar solver in simulation premium, we're starting to push the bounds of what it can handle with the hyperelastic material in this amount of compression. The other is the sliding contacts, and those sliding contacts take a ton of processing power as well as um, just the algorithms behind them to solve those. And with so many in this solution, between all those faces that were coming together, not only those center uh, holes, but also the uh, kind of um, notches in the side, that causes a lot more um, 
calculations to take place. And then finally, it, the tetrahedral mesh. Um, the tetrahedral mesh is an incredibly fast mesher. It maps the geometry really, really well. But when you get into highly compressible areas like what we saw here, it does have a tendency to start to break down. We start seeing high strain in elements because we're actually distorting the elements rather than truly compressing them or we're stretching them. So where do we go from here, right? What's that next step? Well, up until you know a couple of years ago, structural professional engineer wasn't around and we would be actually going to the Samulia, the full abacus uh, solution to solve this type of a problem. Well, right now, we have SPE and it really fills that gap between Smolia and the SOLIDWORKS Premium product. So how do we get to SPE? What, what does that process look like? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn on a uh, 3D experience connector for SOLIDWORKS. So this actually gets installed on your machine and you access it through the add-ins. And what this does is it actually adds another tab over on the right-hand side of the task pane uh, that shows that connector at the bottom. When you select on that, it opens up the connector window and you can specify what you want to come over from SOLIDWORKS simulation into SPE. And this includes things like material, boundary conditions, geometry conditions, et cetera. So, where I'm going to go ahead and rename my simulation uh, to bumper nonlinear. I'm going to give it an uh, independent name. We can see that a couple things do not directly come over. So you can see that the general static step is being created. So we're going to get a new one of those. The contact is going away from all those individual uh, no penetration contacts to a general contact. We'll talk about that when we get into SPD. Go ahead and I launched the connector, what that does is it opens up my 3D experience passport login. I'll put in my password here. And once I log in, the connector begins to launch and launches the 3D experience uh, window. You also uh, choose where you want to save the files to. So in this case, I picked this collaborative space and my role is leader, which means I have full access to everything with regards to the files uh, themselves. So it does take a second for the connector to launch. So you can see that it's authenticating at this point. And what we're going to see here is the connector is going to fully finish. And when it does, that bar is going to go uh, green. And then what I will be able to do is actually um, close that connector and it's going to bring up the SPE uh, interface for us. So you can see that the SPE interface is starting up. And when I select done, that's going to take me into the 3D experience uh, platform. So now that we've gone out of the um, SOLIDWORKS interface, we're now moving into the structural professional engineer, the SPE interface. And what we see here is it's, it's fairly uh, familiar. And with regards to that, what we see is on the left hand side um, is a very similar to the SOLIDWORKS simulation tree. Um, it's the SPE specification tree. Um, like simulation, you can add or edit model setup directly in this tree. At the bottom of the screen, we have the action bar. This is very similar to the command manager in SOLIDWORKS. So this is where you're going to access the bulk of your commands for uh, SPE. And then from there on the right hand side, there is actually an assistant. So this is very similar to the SOLIDWORKS simulation wizard, but it gives you a feel for where are you at within the confines of the model and, and where are you at with it being set up. You can notice we have a bunch of green checks that indicates that those came over from SOLIDWORKS simulation. We do have a red uh, kind of Ghostbuster symbol on the results because we haven't run this yet. We do have a box around the connections, meaning that we may have to add uh, some additional connections in here. So as far as the action bar at the bottom, we can actually we can fire up the feature manager. And this is really the easiest way to understand what um, from the setup of the model in SOLIDWORKS simulation carried over into SPE. We can see that the fixture uh, here is known as a clamp in SPE is already applied to the model. 
the reference geometry loads, including the compression of the 55 millimeters, is applied as well. Um, the mesh is present and located under the element type line. The global bonded contact, however, did not carry over. That has been replaced with a general contact. And this is actually one of the strong suits of SPE and Smolia is, is the general contact itself. What I did was I just edited that and I turned off um, the geometry uh, correction aspect there. And all that that is, is it allows you to look at the geometry a little bit differently. For most uh, simulations in SB, it's not required, so I just turn that off. But what we're going to see is we're going to have to add some additional things into the model itself. Uh, but before we get there, I wanted to address the mesh. Remember, I said that the tetrahedral mesh is very good, does a good job of analyzing what's happening um, or, or depicting what's happening inside a solar simulation. However, the tetrahedral isn't necessarily that good for high compression areas. So what I'm going to do is go into the mesh part manager and I'm going to select all three components. So the two top plates and the middle bumper. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to tell the software to update. What that's going to do is it's just going to verify that the mesh came over from SOLIDWORKS simulation. We can see that tetrahedral mesh. Now, we're not going to use this, and one of the benefits of SBE is we have a wide range of other elements that we can look at, including hex-dominant uh, or swept 3D meshes that use hex elements, and those are very good for high compression areas. So what I'm going to do is select all three of those components, and I'm going to delete the mesh off of there. From here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select, select on the swept 3D mesh. I'm going to pick the front face of the bumper, and I'm going to give the software some parameters of what I want uh, to utilize with this. Mainly, I'm going to use linear um, elements. I'm going to give it an overall element size. And then I'm going to tell the software how many layers do I want to be the thickness of this component. So I'm going to specify four layers. And in here, we can also edit the additional parameters. So we can adjust, you know, is it a truly hex dominant? Is it going to be a linear order or quadratic? And is it going to be hex only? So we're going to stick with hex only and the linear uh, element type. So once we select mesh, what you're going to see is it's going to generate that uh, mesh through the center uh, component. The other thing that we can do is we can assign that mesh to the upper and lower plate as well. So we're giving it one element thickness from the top to the bottom uh, of those plates. So this is what the final mesh looks like with the quad or the, the hex uh, dominant elements. And again, these are very good in, in compression. So remember the bonded contact that we had as a general contact inside of uh, solar simulation. Well, that, that bonded global contact is now called a general contact inside of structural professional engineer. And what we want to do is we want to add in these ties to the model. So a tie is considered a bonded contact. And since we lost those from Simulation Pro, we're going to be able to do that here inside of SPE. First thing that I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to hide the mesh using the visualization management just to clean up the interface. Uh, what you see is under the connections tab of the action bar at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and select tie. And again, this is the equivalent of a bonded contact. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the software what do we want to assign this to. So I'm going to pick the bot uh, top plate face of the bottom plate. I'm going to hold in F7, it hides that geometry for me, and then I'm going to be able to pick the bottom face of the bumper, and when I hit F8, it's going to bring back that lower piece. And what that does is it allows me to add that tie or that bonded contact, using solar simulation terms, to hold these two components together. I'm going to do the same thing for the upper uh, plate here as well. So again, I'm going to select that uh, underside face of the plate, hold in uh, or select F7 to turn that off, select the inner 
face of the bumper and then F8 to bring that back. We now have both of our ties associated and you can see that on the connections, we have a green check now indicating that that is tied together. And again, that global contact um, of the general contact works for all those other areas where we had to assign a no penetration before. Now, just to show you that we can edit anything at any time, I'm gonna go back into those tie components uh, or those, those tie contacts, and I'm gonna turn off the adjust slave surface initial position, something that's not really needed here. And all that that does is it causes a little bit more calculation time ahead of, ahead of the game. Another thing that I like to do when I'm in structural professional engineering, this is a really nice feature, is I can actually run a check for the finite element just to make sure everything looks good. I got a, a green check that we were cleared. And then I'm gonna go up to my upper right-hand corner and select save. What this is going to do is it's gonna save the setup as well as the model for me onto the 3D Experience Cloud. Before we run the analysis, let's look at the step properties. So this is identical to going into the simulation properties in SOLIDWORKS in the region period. So here I can give it the overall time, the maximum number of increments. I can also tell it what I want my initial time increment to be. And in this case, I used 0.01 before using 0.05 now in SPE because I know that it can take larger jumps and still solve very accurately. Turn on stabilization if we want, and we are including geometric nonlinearity in the model. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and look at the element type assignment and just one further change or one additional change to the bumper itself and I'm going to specify that I want to use a hybrid cell. So this is a quad cell, linear brick cell, but I'm using the hybrid formulation. And that is because that works very well uh, for nearly incompressible rubber, like what we're using here. So I'm just switching to the hybrid element type uh, on the mesh. From there, it's a matter of simulating the analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and select simulate. What that's going to do is it's going to bring up the solver uh, window. As soon as I hit OK, it will start. But what I want to show you is that it is local interactive. I'm using four cores that are on my machine. However, if you needed more computing power, you certainly can use um, the computing power on the platform as well. Here for my units, I'm going to go ahead and change these to inch pound second. So we can do that either in the options across the entire study or just for my solve. Uh, units. So when I select OK, what you're going to see is it's going to start to run the simulation. So this really is where the magic happens. So when I select OK, it's going to bring up the simulation status window. And this gives us feedback as to what's happening in the uh, solver. Now, just as a note, this is not sped up like the SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium uh, Solver. This is real time. And what you see is it starts working through those simulation steps. We also have diagnostics that we can look at and convergence plots. But as it's working through these steps, you'll see that uh, static step 11, you have a one U there. That just means that it had to take a slight step back uh, as far as finding convergence and in equilibrium and then start the rest of the way through, but you notice these steps are going a lot faster, even faster than the ones that were sped up for SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium. So this, the Simulia or the Abacus Implicit Solver plus the general contact, what that offers you is it offers you speed. So I'm using two less cores than I use with SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium, but it's really trucking through this solution very quickly. So we can see we're almost at a point where it's finished and it loads the results once it is complete. So what took us over an hour to only get to about 70% of the way to a solution in simulation premium took under two minutes to solve using SPE. 
So the implicit advocate solver is popular and it's popular for a reason and it's, it's just this, right? Not only did we get to a full solution, but the solution time, the time to the results was very quick. So let's go ahead and indeed look at those results and see kind of what we receive from SPE. So we can step through the incremental steps uh, and uh, save points in SPE in the plots window. So I can uh, manually select on these and it'll go to the next one. And we can see that compression as it as it comes all the way down to that full 55 millimeter. We can even see you know, how those cells are deforming and kind of puckering out from that side view. The other thing is the play button on the compass in the upper left-hand corner isn't just for looks. You can select on that and it animates the plot. And we can slow that down so we can really see those contacts coming together. And again, that one general contact allowed for those open slots to almost come to completely flat and touching. It's a very robust uh, solution. So from there, we can actually pause uh, the, the result as well. And then one of the things that we can do is instead of uh, just looking at the von Mises stress, we can look at different uh, options. So displacement, just like you can in SOLIDWORKS simulation. And we can step through what does that, what does that displacement look like? We can also look at contact shear, contact pressure. In this case, this is the pressure of all of those components coming together. And then we can just look at the deformed shape uh, as well. We'll go ahead and switch back to the von Mises stress. And one of the things that we can do is we can uh, take, and when you move your cursor anywhere on the component, it's just like the probe tool inside of SOLIDWORKS simulation. So we have that feedback as well. We have a number of different plots and sensors and display states that we can specify. And in this case, I am gonna do the plot sectioning, which is your section plot inside a SOLIDWORKS simulation. And it allows us to go through and really kind of see what's happening inside the model. So a lot of times you only see what's happening on the outside. This is like a, an MRI in the model, right? We're taking a section a view through it and understanding what's happening uh, inside of there. And then you can just simply toggle that off by selecting um, the toggle option. So we're going to go ahead and deactivate it. We can also highlight where the min and max are as well. So we can point those areas out and have an understanding of, you know, where are those, not only at this last uh, plot step, but through all the plot steps uh, as we are looking at those. Then we can also go in and I had set up a series of sensors on this ahead of time. And we can look at those at the different locations as well as to what that is giving us. So the sensor capability that you had in solid simulation, we have that in SPE as well. Pretty much anything from the post-processing that we have that you're used to utilizing in solid simulation, SPE has, and actually a little bit, a little bit more. So question is, why would you adopt simulation? And once you've adopted simulation, you're kind of pushing it to its limits. Why would you adopt uh, SBE? Well, you know, I've, I've said this over the years, but you're going to be able to design better products while designing products better. You're getting better information about your designs through the design process, and you're able to implement those as you're coming up with, with those new ideas. It's going to allow you to get to market faster and the quality of your product is going to go up and that's going to be very evident to to your uh, customers